Hi everyone, welcome to Anthony's Hobby Corner. Um, this video that I'm shooting today is on request by one of my subscribers uh, requesting to go through a full service of a Bachmann uh, or a vintage Bachmann F7 uh, unit. So today I'm going to be uh, servicing one of my older Bachmann units that I have here um, to satisfy that request. Now this is also a Ringfield motor type Bachmann, so it's the older Bachmanns. Uh, so let's uh, let's get to it. So as I mentioned before, this one is the uh, the oldest style that has the Ringfield motor inside uh, and some metal plates in the center to give you some weight. This is not the split frame or split chassis Bachmanns that came after. All right, so the first step here is to pop the cover out. It's very easy to pop the cover on these. They usually held together with a little tab and insert here that you can see onto the um, onto the, the shell. And there's a little little tab that's on both ends here. So all you, all you gotta do is put your fingers inside on each end here and just pry open a bit and it'll just drop. And there you go. I hope this just drops. Just gotta make sure you slide out the uh, coupler from the front cowling. There's a the shell, I'm gonna put the shell aside. All right. <clears throat> so here it is. You got the, uh, the standard vintage Bachmanns here with the metal plates in the center for added weight. You got your uh, little bulb there for the uh, illumination of the front lamp. Um, and your Bachmann Ringfield motor at the back. So basically, I'm going to spin this around now so it's easier to see the other side. And as you can see, this is a typical Ringfield motor. It's got the, um, the two brushes on this end. Uh, and uh, the motor drives one bogey or truck. And it gets its pickup from the other bogey or truck in the front. Alright, so in order to drop this uh, driven truck through the frame down, there is a piece of plastic here, as you can see in the center, that's held with a screw onto the body of the Ringfield motor. The first thing to do is to remove that. Screw, and put that in a, in a tray on the side here. So you don't lose that. Just take the piece of plastic out of there. There's the piece of plastic that holds the motor from falling through the um, through the to the to the frame. So I'll put that aside as well in the parts tray. And now we should be able to just drop the motor down. wires are kind of tight so that's how much space I have or to work on the motor so as you'll notice this one actually has pick pickups from both trucks because there's also a black wire with, with, with connected to a vi um, Viper here on these wheels and a red wire on the other side here connected, connected to the Viper on this side so You've got pickups from both the front truck as well as the back trucks. So that's good. So it's all four wheel pickup, a four, tr a four axle pickup. All right. So the first thing here now is to um, to disassemble the motor. And what I do is basically first pull out the um, the brush plates because there are there are brushes inside here with with springs that are kept in place by these little brush plates. So if you remove them carefully, uh, you can then slowly release the, the springs. Now, you've got to be careful when you remove this sometimes because these springs and brushes uh, love to launch themselves into lunar orbit ever so often. So and it's hard to find them after that. So be careful as you take them out and make sure they don't spring out fast. All right, so I'm going to be pulling out this one first. I 
I just zoomed in a bit there so you can see it better. So I like to keep my finger on top of this before I take it out. And also note your polarity, so I got the black wires on the outer side of the motor and the red wires on the inner side. So keep track of that. There's the screw with the spring it in place. These suppliers here and slowly spring as you can see just fell to the side so I'll grab that now this one looks relatively very clean so I'm not expecting too much gunk inside this locomotive but let's take a look anyways so the spring came out which means the brush is still sitting inside the inside the uh, brush housing here which is fine it's not a big issue we're gonna do the same for the other side now because there is some uh, some substance here that's holding this plate in place I don't have to worry too much about putting my thumb in or finger on top of the, uh, the brush plate the screw and let's slowly pop this one open as well gonna slowly grab the Plate. And there's a spring. They're, they're both very, very clean, so I'm very impressed with that. Now, you can actually tip the motor over and make the brushes fall out, but I'm okay with that. I'm just going to keep it as it is. And I'm going to remove um, the remaining two screws at the bottom here. You can see there's one down here and there's one down here and these two screws will then help pull the face place out now it looks like they put some um, tread lock on these on these on these nuts and that's why they're held in place which I think is a good idea so in any case I do have tread lock as well so I can put it back in so here we go now uh, before you pop the um, faceplate of the motor you can actually make it a little bit easier to get to the screws and stuff there if you actually remove the, uh, the bottom cover here of, of, of the truck uh, so here now that we have access you can see this little tab here I'm just gonna put a screwdriver behind here and just pop that tab open and take this whole uh, cover out and then remove from this side as well Now remember the orientation of this truck, it's important. You make sure you get to reinsert it back the same way you took it out. Okay, don't invert it upside down. You're gonna short the locomotive because remember the polarities have to be lined up on these axles and these axles. So, pop this one out. Wow, have look at the gears, they're in really good shape. They've got a little bit of grease on there, which is great. I'm not gonna really do anything in here at all because as you can see it's very clean um, I just might put a dab of uh, dab of lubricant on here uh, now that I'm in here um, and then even the wiper the backs of, of, of the um, the wheels look really really clean but I just might clean them up briefly and, and the, the pickup points uh, but now as you can see it's easy to get access to the uh, the motor plate and the brushes just fell out, as you can see them here. There they are, be careful. They can also launch themselves into orbit very easily. All right, now typically what I do is I like to put a little bit of um, contact cleaner in a little container like this 
and then put the brushes in there to soak. So let me do that right now. Okay, so I have this uh, plastic safe electric contact cleaner that I use. So I'm just gonna put some into this little uh, little tray here. There you go, a little bit in here. And uh, now these brushes are very clean, but I'm still gonna just put them in here to soak and remove any kind of gunk that's on there and just shake them up a bit and let them soak there on the side. All right, so now let's go ahead and remove the uh, the face plate of the motor. So there's a screw here. Keep them in the tray. Let's see the screw. Put in the tray. Now, because this is the older style Bachmann, as you can see, the um, the point where the the motor splits is actually all part of the frame as well. So the split line is right here. It goes all the way over the motor, but also into the into the bottom part of the uh, transmission. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop out both these axles so that we can split the, we can pull apart the uh, both sides of the housing. So the axles kind of a, a friction fit on the bearing here. So just pop them out. There they go. Now also note the orientation of the axle. You can see that the bottom side here is a non-insulated side and this is the insulated side. So sorry, the axle has got to go in that way. Okay. So I'm going to take this axle. I'm going to place it the same orientation on the side in the parts, parts plate. And we're going to do the same for this side. Now that I know that the insulated, insulated side of the wheels on this side, on the top, they just pop out. There you go. And now we can actually even clean the contact on the on the um, the contact plate here on both ends properly uh, and we can also um, uh, put in some fresh lubricant in the uh, gears and we can also split apart the uh, the top piece now when you do that obviously you're going to find that the gears are going to fall apart these gears are going to come out but they're fairly easy to remember the ones with the shafts go in the second notch here the ones that sit inside just go in the in the notch of inside inside the um the shaft in here so it's very simple uh, it's not very hard to uh, uh to figure this out and it's 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 really hard to screw it up so so now i can carefully pull apart the top plate as you can see it just slides out and exposes the motor So as you can see, the brushes on the other side, not on this side. So we're gonna place this on the side like that, and we're gonna remove this gear. So this is one large gear that goes in the center. I'm gonna rinse them also in isopropyl alcohol in a second. That goes there. The two little small gears can on each side. These two are interchangeable, and these slide in. All right, so now you got the bare housing with the armature visible. Now I can just grab the armature. little tricky just grab it like that put a magnetic there we go there we go it's a very small little armature on these on, on these uh, on 
on this back one. So I'm gonna zoom in now a bit. There we go, so now you can take a look at the armature. It's in fairly good shape actually, there isn't uh, much gunk in here at all. But either way, I like to clean the armature properly and put a little bit of uh, polish on it. So first is to remove the gunk already on there. So let's use a cotton bud. And, uh, and some contact cleaner. Put some uh, contact cleaner on the cotton bud there. And we're going to now clean the uh, armature. And it's the dirt on there. Not much actually for uh, an old, old locomotive. Um, now also be careful when you take the armature out. There is a, a trust wa uh, trust washer over here. As you can see, it's, it's a white plastic washer. Make sure you don't lose that because that is the one that provides um, the bearing effect against the the bushing on the on the, on the on the chassis here against that right so make sure you don't lose that wow so even though it looked clean, there's a lot of uh, a lot of dirt on here. All right, next, I'm going to use a dental pick, something like this, or even a toothpick, to something really, really, really pointy, to um, to clean between uh, the uh, the armature um, contact points in here. You need to remove the gunk in between there because sometimes that gunk is conductive because it's it's actually worn out brush material and it can actually start to short out your um, short out your uh, coils without even realizing and have erratic erratic uh, behavior of your motor so just clean that up there we go it's one more little clean now for this one the next step is not necessary because it's very clean, but I'm going to do it anyways. Is that I like to put a little bit of brasso. Uh, let me zoom back. A little bit of brasso here just to uh, polish up and take any any um, of the residue that's got baked into the armature, uh, into the um, the contact point of the armature here. Take a dab of uh, double brasso, and this is just one uh, final touch here. So I'm going to put it back on zoom. And what this does is actually take away any kind of um, scratches that are currently on the armature, uh, and any kind of dirt that's embedded itself into that scratches and completely gives you a brand new smooth surface for uh, the the contacts and, and the brushes to write on. As I said, this step is not really necessary uh, unless you have a really gunked up commutator. Uh, but I figured since I'm in here now already, I might as well just uh, do this for demonstration purposes anyways.
Okay, and you can see there's some gunk that's come on out from this as well. And you're gonna get that hazy look right now on this, uh, this uh, commutator. It's fine, I don't know. Clean it up with a fresh cotton bud. And you should see one shiny commutator here. There you go. Nothing on here. Now, just to be just to be clear again, I'm going to uh, use this dental pick again to uh, to clean between the uh, commutator contacts. All right, and then I'll just do one more. dab of contact cleaner just to remove any res uh, residue from the brass so there you go Actually, just a quick tip here. This is one of the most crucial uh, uh, elements to making sure that your locomotive runs smoothly. Most people will just lubricate their the axles and put some lubricant in the transmission uh, and the way they go. But uh, this is the heart of your locomotive. The motor is the heart of your locomotive. Uh, and if you neglect that, you just won't be able to get the same, same level of uh, uh, running behavior that you would get them when they come brand new. But if you just take this extra step, Clean the commutator such as nice and clean. Put some proper lubrication on 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 both bearings uh, inside inside the chassis here, uh, and I can show you how to do that. Um, both these bearings need to get uh, lubrication, uh, minimum lubrication, and then they run really really well. All right, so we are done with the with the uh, commutator and armature right now. They're they're all good to go. So we're going to now carefully place it back um, in in the, in the chassis. But before I do that. I'm going to take a fresh cotton bud, put some contact cleaner on it, like so, and I'm going to just clean the inside of this um, of this chamber, just to get any any kind of gunk out of there. And again, we, we need to remember that these are all mechanical devices, and so you know they need to be cleaned every so often. Uh, and there you go. Look at all that gunk inside. I use a dry side to clean it up again. Okay, we're good. Now, typically, I would also clean uh, with a cotton bud the insides of these uh, brush housings, but I've seen it seem to be extremely, extremely clean. So there's really no need to go to that step here. Typically, I would clean that as well because a, a telltale sign is how clean your brushes are. And if they're very clean, then you know the housing is fairly clean anyways. But um, and, in, and mine seems to be that case right now. All right, I'm going to clean this side as well. Again, some contact cleaner. Now, if you don't have contact cleaner, then I would recommend you use something that's very, very mild, like something that's plastic safe, uh, maybe even isopropyl alcohol um, uh, to be safe. Uh, be very careful when you're working with plastics here because not all, all cleaning agents are plastic safe. There you go, there's more dirt from this side. Okay, so we got both these surfaces clean. I got something here. Move that. 
So Greece looks like okay. All right, that's good to go. All right, so I I typically use a few different types of lubricants, um, and so the one I use here for uh, most locomotives here is the uh, Hobby Lube uh, light oil, and um, and I also have a medium as well that I use for certain locomotives, but uh, either the Hobby Lube or um, Labelle, um, they're all good oils, good uh, hobby grade oils and lubricants. Um, if you don't have access to uh, these type of lubricants, then again use as, as something that you can get that's close as possible to a, a light to medium oil uh, that's designed for like small mechanical uh, machinery. Uh, please don't use WD-40. WD-40 tends to gunk up later on. It has some bad residual effects, so stay away from WD-40. Uh, but if you can get access in, uh, you know, to purchasing uh, at least one of these, it'll last you many, many years. And it's if you're into the hobby, you might as well get one of these because it's you're going to have locomotives that you're going to have to maintain anyways. So uh, I also have this other product called uh, Conductor Lube. Um, and this is this is a product also by Parkman and Atlas and so on. Uh, this one is actually a conductive lubricant that I would typically use on the brush side bearing of these ring field motors. Because one of the problems with these ring field motors is that moment you add some lubricant to the bearing, and I'm going to zoom in here for a second, to the bearing that's that mates with this surface here, that lubricant actually travels down uh, the shaft here and basically goes uh, and um, embeds itself on the on the uh, commutator and fouls up the commutator. That's just a, a poor design of ring field motors. So that's why for this bearing on the commutator side, you put in just a dab, a very, very small amount of lubricant so that it's sufficient to lubricate the, 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 the shaft and bearing, but it doesn't travel too much into the, into the commutator. So be very careful when you put lubrication in there. But when you use this one, because this is a conductive lube, once even if it gets on the commutator, it, it won't impact the commutator that much. So either way, um, it's time to put the uh, the armature and commutator back into the casing. Again, keep in mind the little white washer is here, as you can see on on this side and also on this side. So you know that you haven't dropped your uh, uh, trust washers. And these thrust washers are very, very important uh, for these for these uh, uh, ring field motors. All right, so I'm going to turn this upside down here. Zoom back out. I'm going to pop this right back into the into the case. Didn't quite go in. There it is. Okay. Now we're going to put the gears back in. The gears look relatively clean, so I'm not going to uh, spend too much time on them, but this one looks a little, little bit little bit gunky. Uh, let me just get this one out here. This one here has got a little bit of gunk on it, so I'm going to clean this one up. And uh, you can use some IPA for this one, or isopropyl alcohol. These are nylon gears, so there's no issues. And then again, I've worked with locomotives that are far worse condition. This, so this, this is really good shape. I'm not, uh, not too concerned at all. So there you have a clean gear. Now, just keep in mind, your gears go back in the opposite way that you put, you, you took them out, right? So. Um, just keep that in mind. Actually, I might as well clean all the gears now that I got them here, so let them out. And now's a good time to also check if you have any cracked gears, because Bachmann's are notorious uh, at, at one point to have a lot of cracked gears there. Uh, the gears didn't quite last as long, and so uh, a quick inspection will make sure that you don't have any cracked gears here, and mine are good so far. So just make sure you pay attention to that as well. Okay, so I'm going to pop the gears back in.
remove this. Uh, just gonna remove some of this old grease in here. ones into sorry because I took I took the gears out again but there's a little bit of gunk sitting in here as well so make sure to remove all of that That's better. Okay, that looks cleaner. So let's put these ones in first because they came out last. to put the uh, the uh, the side of the enclosure back and then I'll put some lubrication after well, actually I might as well put a little bit right now that I'm already have it open here so put some uh, a little bit on this shaft there just a tad that's it Right there. Okay, and I need to put a dab on the center one here in the top. And now we're ready to close the housing. Out and lock into the gears. There we go. Okay, now I can put a dab of lubricant on this bearing. Remember, this bearing does not have the brushes on this side, so it's not as it's not as uh, not as concerning. But uh, there you go, just a dab of lubricant, and that's all you need on that side. And we'll do the same on this side, but I'm going to do that later on before I just close things up. All right, so I'm going to spin it across. All right, I'm going to put the screws back on here. Magnet, so it's sucked in by the magnet there. Remember, these are plastic chassis, so don't over tighten. You can easily strip the, the threads on the uh, the chassis. All 
All right, we got that in place. Now I'm gonna clean these contacts as well with some contact cleaner. Take any gunk off those as well. Again, there really isn't much on these. clean around the chassis here all right we're good to now put the brushes back on so if you notice i had the brushes soaking here before and this is discolored a bit which means a little bit of gunk but not much in there at all so let's take, take the brushes out and uh, clean them Again, be very careful when you handle these brushes. They also love to launch themselves into lunar orbit, so be, be very careful. There we go, we have one clean brush. I was actually looking for the smooth surface. Yep, the other side is a smooth surface, so this is the side that goes on to the uh, yep, so this side goes on to the uh, oops yep, so I'm going to pop that in here there we go The smooth surface on that side, so pop that one in. All right, so brushes are in. Now we're going to put the uh, the contact plates back on. Now, before I do this, the moment I put my contact plates back on and I have to screw it back to those terminals, I'm going to lose. You know, uh, room of, of work work flexibility. So I'm going to hold on for a second. I'm going to actually clean up these axles, put them back on, put the um, the truck housing back on, and then put the put the. Uh... All right. So I'm going to zoom in a bit here again. So we're ready to put the axles back on. I've just put the uh, all the other gear wheels together. Just to recap, and uh, I did put some lubric lubricant on here. Uh, as well on some of the gears uh, but I'll put a little bit here and make sure you can see it okay and then make sure you also lubricate these bear this, this bearings bearing housings okay all right now we're ready to put the axles on uh, now this axle here is, is remember we had the insulation uh, on top uh, facing up the black insulation on the on the wheel here as you can see this now this axle happens to have insulation on both ends so that's fine uh, but the gears go a certain orientation, so that's why I'm going to put it the same way we took it out, like that. And this one happens to have insulation only on one side, which is interesting. Either way, which is what, this is what you typically see, but either way, it goes in this way, because the gear has to sit this orientation. So make sure you, you mark those when you take them out. Um, <laughs> and you notice my brushes fell out, so I'll put them back in again later. Alright, so... Squeeze in your contact wipers and this has got to slide up. 
this sits in front of that. There we go. And now we're going to put the second one. Yep, it's all locked in properly. Sufficient. More than ample lubrication in here. So now we can uh, close the housing. So you got the gears properly connected. You can see them properly staggered in the right formation. And now we're going to put the housing back on. Okay, and now it's time to put the housing back on. There we go. Now we can flip it over. So now let's put the brushes carefully back in. There's goes one. There goes the other. And now we're going to slowly slide the springs in. Okay, and now we're going to take the plate. What I want to do is I need to now be very careful. I need to hold the plate in place. So I'm going to squeeze the, the spring, as you can see here, hold it in place, the opening is there, and then bring the connection ring close by, that one there, and then put the screw through it. screw There you go. So you got one, one brush in, and make sure when you when you tighten the screw that this tab doesn't swing right and touch the side. You want to make sure they sit vertical. Okay. Now let's put the second uh, second one in. Spring. Again, same process, hold it in place, and then hold it in place with your finger, and then make sure it lines up. Bring the eyelet out. And the screw. from spinning okay so 
now your motor is completely serviced. Clean brushes, clean springs, clean commutator, clean wheels, and fresh lubricant. So now we can slide this back. Put the wires. Slides back in. Okay, and all I have to do is put this plastic retaining piece that holds the structure in place. Well, of course, it falls in there. There we go, stays in place. Okay, just hand tighten, don't tighten it too tight. And there's your, uh, there's your motor. Now we can just pop the front and clean the front, uh, front pickup wipers and we're good to go. Just gonna pop the housing from the outside here. There they are. Insulated wheels and just uh, wipers. So let's let's clean them up. Clean the insides of these wheels. There's the dirt coming out. All right, also clean the uh, riding surface. Squeeze your uh, pickups in and then put the wheels. Same here. There they go. This one's very quick. And slide the cover back on. The uh, seems to have popped out. There you go. Your locomotive is, is fully serviced now. So I'll put a little bit of lubricant here on these on these uh, bearing points, the front because I didn't. That's it.
now we can put our case back on and take it for a test run. And you see that the case rests on these tabs. All you could do is open up the shell a bit and it'll just pop right in. There you go. There you go, you've got yourself a fully serviced locomotive, Bachmann vintage Ringfield motor locomotive. Now well, let's take it on the layout and give it a quick test run. Alright guys, let's uh We're on the track here. I don't have much, uh, I can't run it for too far because I got some passenger cars already on the track there and uh, some other locals on the other track. So let me just run it backwards here, I guess, on this track a bit and we can see how it runs. All right, here we go. Let's see what it does. Okay, so I'm just gonna move back and forth again here. It's fine. All right, well, there you go. I was intentionally running it slower so you, it, uh, you can see how well the motor runs. Again, it's got fresh lubrica lubricants uh, all over, so it can do, give you an additional 40 hours of hassle-free running before you can do another service on it, or if you need to do another service on it. So there you go. How to service a um, vintage Bachmann Ringfield motor locomotive. Hope you found it useful. If you have any comments or questions, please don't hesitate to contact me via the uh, comment section and I'll be more than happy to uh, respond. Thank you.